This is the EPS 12 volt connector that has to be plugged into the motherboard to provide your CPU with power. And I recently had someone tell me that when a motherboard has an additional 4 or even 8 pin connector that you must plug in additional cables to provide the CPU with proper power. And today I'm going to talk with you guys about why that's not necessarily true and let you know how many cables you should be plugging in to give your CPU proper power. So looking at the top left here, this is a picture of my motherboard. You can see the 8-pin CPU connector along with an additional 4-pin. And I'm going to tell you guys why the additional 4-pin is totally unnecessary, especially on the AM4 platform. This EPS 12 volt connector here is from my HX750i power supply. And when we take a look at the diagram here for the EPS 12 volt connector, you can see that the top four that are in yellow are the 12 volt connections and the bottom four are the ground connections for a total of eight 18 gauge wires. And the four that carry the 12 volt power are capable of 10 amps each, which comes out to be 480 watts of power that can be delivered. And even worst case scenario, if we assume that each wire is only capable of delivering 5 amps, that's still 240 watts at 12 volts, which is more than enough for most CPUs on this list. So today what I'm going to do is push my CPU to its limits to prove to you guys that the EPS 12 volt connector is more than capable for even the most current power hungry CPUs. So in the BIOS here, I've set the default power limits actually for the 5950X just to allow my 5700X to pull all the power that it wants. I've set a fixed voltage of 1.35 and a multiplier of 47, which is 4.7 gigahertz. So we're gonna use Cinebench here to put the CPU under an all core load and set it to loop for 30 minutes. And when we take a look at hardware info here, you can see that we're pulling 77 amps at 1.331 volts and the temperatures climb to around 90 C with all of the cores sitting at 4.7 gigahertz. And looking at the data here from the VRM sensors, you can see that we are of course putting out around 77 amps at 1.326 volts. That's what's being provided to the CPU. But more importantly, and the point of this video is, if you look at the current we're inputting to the VRM at around 12 volts, we're only pulling 10 and a half amps, which is only a fourth of what the eight pin EPS 12 volt cable is capable of this one being 18 gauge wires and capable of delivering 40 amps total and that's with pushing my cpu to its limits and even hypothetically if there was a cpu that could go into the am4 socket that could pull double what i'm pulling right now which would be 20 amps you're still only at half of what the eps 12 volt connectors capable of. And also keep in mind that the AM4 socket is actually limited to 142 watts. So the eight pin is more than enough to power any of the AM4 CPUs. And even looking back at this chart here at the 13900K, which pulls 295 watts, a single eight pin is still enough for the 13900K. But if you're spending that amount of money on a CPU, you're probably building a really nice system with a really nice power supply. So you might as well just go ahead and plug in the additional four or eight pin. But the point of this video is just to prove that the eight pin CPU power connector can deliver more than enough power for most CPUs. And so if you're running a high end system and you're worried about plugging in additional CPU power, you should be just fine. Just choose the right power supply for the system you're building and you'll have nothing to worry about. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Go ahead and do me a favor. If you've made it this far, hit subscribe. It's free. Most of you watching aren't subscribed. And if you're enjoying these videos, why not hit subscribe for future content? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.